that if I'm here, I'm going to go on. And if you're here, you get it. And if you don't, you don't. And usually at the end of the semester, it would mean that you wouldn't be happy with the grade you receive. So I don't have grading power, but I do have the power to uh, begin um, my session, this, this final session with us. And let me just say uh, good morning to you again, but let me say a word about my friend uh, in the person of the esteemed and renowned Bishop Jerome H. Ross Sr. Uh, and his uh, lovely mate, mother. Uh, I, I call her that because that's what he called her. And I've been doing that now for a lot of years. Uh, I think I've been at every house they ever lived in in Columbus, so that tells you about how long I've been knowing them. But more importantly, how long they've been knowing me. And I say that because I had been to Columbus one time before I to preach for another pastor who was from Florida that didn't meet the bishop then. It was not until after um, we connected with Dr. Charles H. Booth that the bishop came to the life and we ain't been separated and we've been through lots of things. I owe him. I, I'm a debtor to him uh, because he thought it not robbery to connect to me while I'm a little bit younger, not much, than he. It is that he was able to share wisdom into my life. And it was a time when I met him in my life that I needed a Jerome H. Ross. And I needed Mother Ross. And they have never let me down. So thank you to the both of you who have allowed me to come. Now, um, we've been talking about this thing about the church in the post-pandemic era. Our text has been one to lead us to a place where we could know that God is concerned about the condition of the church. He told John to take the reed like a rod from his hand and measure the temple and the altar and the people therein. Now you all remember that part, you did all of that. In so doing, he made it certain that he was going to make it clear that they had the possibilities of doing things that they did not know. I think God has been doing that for us to let us know that it's possible to do some things even that we haven't done before. And so that we can take ourselves out of places of being uh, afraid to move forward. We learned that temples can be destroyed and they can be rebuilt. I think that's why he makes it understand that we are the church and so that God uses us as that representation. And so that in this whole situation, 
God said he had some witnesses. Remember that's a tribulation time, and the times in which we live are much like tribulation times. It's chaotic. It's uncertain about what's going to happen, what's going to be, but God assures us that he still is. He gives us the understanding that we have the privilege yet to warn others about the coming of time, the changing of time, that we have the ability to uh, receive protection from God over the enemy on day one. We went through all of those things, the big sermon we did that. Yesterday, we spent time talking about the measurement of the temple, I mean of the altar. It is, while it is the place, it's also a spirit. So that when we come to the altar, we come close to his spirit. That's why we have to separate it from the rest of the building that it designated that this is the place where you get closest to him in the temple. So we set that up yesterday to talk about its significance, uh, to talk about how it is uh, certain that we can make sure that we have our salvation and we know how God moves in giving us his son. Today, I want us to talk about the last part of this verse and them that worship therein. Them that worship therein. Now, I have a little problem because in John's time and in our time, them that worship therein is not just in the temple. Technology has made it possible for them that worship to also be where they are, therein. Don't get scared. I'm going to be a little crazy today, but it's I got to go here because some kind of way God is expanding us so that we can accept the fact that he cannot become compartmentalized. You can't put God in one place and expect God to be God. The other thing we have to understand is that we are dealing with time Chronos and God deals in time, Kairos. That means God is time. So while we fuss about the time of the sun rising is different in Eastern Standard or in Eastern time, it doesn't matter. Eastern daylight is still God and in God's own time. So I need us to keep in mind that we recognize that God is time and that we are captured in time. We are caught up in time. Uh, that that um, we think that we're going to be good all a long time, and we will. But don't think you can get out of step in time. Because uh, my daddy used to always say, just keep on running. Say all that... Uh, all that Mother Nature don't do to you, Father, time will. Time. Y'all to get that this afternoon. And so we, after this thing where we're looking at this concept of how we're dealing with it, this nuance of God in different places, to know that God is dealing with us in a particular way. He, he specifically said, them that worship therein. That means that those who are part of the household of faith. Now, a part of that means that uh, the Bible says we should never forsake the gathering of the saints. Y'all read that part? He, he said you don't forsake it. Don't, don't do without it. So again, while people are not in the temple, can negate the that they're not gathering therein. It's, it's hard to get there because we're fussing 
about their absence. But I told you yesterday, some folk are supporting though absent, which means that they are worshiping therein. I might need to find which door is open where I can get out in a minute. But I, <laughs> a part of us understanding how God has moved with this technology piece that some of us don't understand. I remember Bishop, when we were in the 90s, early 90s, um, we organized um, the Millennial Conference um, after some of us had gone down to, gone over to, to uh, England. Saw that conference we went to, said we could do that here. Uh, but one of the things we learned in 90, 91, something like that, that they had a thing called distance learning. That was the early stages of technology being invading our status quo. And that's where they had a television. We were at Howard University, and they could take classes online. Technology. Them that worship therein, online. At the same time, there were many of us who introduced the screens into the church. And so that caused a ruckus because folk were saying, you don't need to have no TV screens in the church house. And, uh, and uh, I was one of them. I'm talking about worshiping therein. And others of them, half and half, half did, half didn't. But look at God. Now everybody is using some form of the screen <laughs> to worship therein. Now, now here again, the arguments in that day was having to do with the sensational versus substance. Was well, it going to add an element of excitement or level? that could not be controlled, but I used to always say, the screen can't show no more than what's being put on it. <laughs> so if you get the spirit in here, and it gets on the screen, and the person listening is listening, what you listening to, the same thing can happen in the house or the garage where they watching. So the scripture says, and them that worship therein. So technology has expanded us to the extent that we can see that God can use technology to reach others in the places where they are. Hmm. Well, that's a good thing because this technology makes it possible for those who would be here but are not here can take advantage of what we're taking advantage of while we're here, therein. And so scripture says you can't exclude them because they learned the same thing you learned it. And so the text says measure them that worship therein. The context of therein expands exponentially because it could be everywhere and anywhere and we don't know who is reaching. Facebook has us, YouTube has us, TikTok has us in places we never thought we would go 
That's what this technology has done. This technology has put us in a place where we never thought we would go. Let me say it another way. Technology has put us in places we ain't never desired to go. So I want to say that technology has been used as a tool to reach people, wherever they is at. See, that's my problem, because I'm afraid that we're only concerned about them that worship where we is at therein. And God is pushing us to accept them who are worshiping therein without. So some kind of way you're going to have to deal with that in your own way. Well, it's been a good tool. But at the same time, God may just have done something else that we didn't think about why we've been in an uproar about the COVID disruption. I'm going to call it disruption because it didn't stop nothing. Just disrupted the way we do it. And maybe God got tired of us doing it the same way. But anyway, but maybe God has allowed technology to help us fulfill the Great Commission. He said, go ye into all the world, not just some of it, all of it. You remember that? And you go there, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We didn't go. We didn't go. But God said, since you won't do like I told you, I got to do what I normally do, do it myself. We didn't go. But now technology is allowing us to reach people all over the world. Now, we wouldn't go to them. So God is bringing them to us, even on the screen. <laughs> I heard somebody, but we don't know who they are. Yes, we do. Because you can still count money. <laughs> Technology has allowed not only worshiping, but also Giving. And so you wouldn't count them on the screen, but yet they give through the screen. I'm going to have to confess, I was slow, y'all was slow to come on. I, when this thing got shut down, and I, I got concerned about how the, <clears throat> the money was going to come in. I, I was, and, it, and, 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 and uh, you ain't got to say amen. I know you out there, you was worried too. You know? uh, thank you, my brother, for honesty. Uh, but God said, I'm going to do it now. I called a guy that I remember talking about this thing of giving online. Met him in an airport at the National Baptist Convention. He talking about, Thompson, you need to get on with this. This next thing we're going to have to do and all like that. I said, well, go on, sign me up. You know me. Just sign me up. And they called for my plane. I had to go on so they could take me to my seat, you know. And he uh, knew me well enough. He signed me up. 
that was two years before COVID. We didn't talk no more. But the Sunday that they announced they was going to shut the, the church down, I called him that Thursday. I said, can you get me in? He said, but Thompson, you already in. Dr. Thompson, you in? I said, no, I'm not in. I say, I remember talking to you, and I left to go in on the plane. He said, but you told me everything I needed to know to get there. All I need is your bank information. I said, that's all. I said, well, I got my paycheck. I had the routing number on the check because I just come from convention. I was going to go catch it. And I give them the numbers. And he said, now, give me your email. He gave me an email. Bing. I was on. I gave the first $50 by email, by the, by the givelify. You see what I'm saying? All I'm saying is that you got to represent what God has done. So, so now, if it wasn't for push pal and and give fire and all these other things, <laughs> PayPal and pay your mama, all them people, <laughs> we'll be broke. Come on now. You see what I'm saying? So they are still worshiping therein. What it's also done without us realizing it is to touch people that we don't even know. Some of the names that come up on the screen, I see the report every now and then. I don't know them, but I'm glad <laughs> that they seen it. I don't know if they're orphan. I don't know if they're a victim of some sex slavery. I don't know if they are got some racism matters. I don't know if they're guilty about pornography, all this stuff the Bible teaches against. I, I don't know if they had an abortion. But they worshiping therein. And I doesn't know whether they poor or not. Because they tell us that people who make the least amount of money are the givingest people per capita to the kingdom. Jesus said, the poor, you're going to have what you always. So now we're in a mess because we're talking about them that dwell, them that worship therein. And, and we don't, everywhere we turn, the Bible battle lines have already been drawn. The kingdom is being challenged. The kingdom is being put out there. You got the wars going on, battle lines between traditional marriages and gay marriages. You got pro-life versus pro-choice. All this in the church. I'm talking about them that worship their end. Now, Mother, I'm, I'm bad, but I ain't bad enough to ask my congregation, but I bet. Has anybody ever had abortion? See what I'm saying? We doesn't know. But God knows. Stay with me, stay with me. I'm just gonna leave here. So. It's almost as if we have awakened from a little nap that lasted too long, that the culture has shifted that somewhere right and wrong are no longer measured by real truth, but by popular opinion. And it's difficult conversations about abortion and homosexuality and religious liberty, and they continue to inject themselves into our conversation, into our lives, into our news, into our everywhere. We cannot exclude folk because we don't know who we're excluding. It's in the workplace. It's in the worship place. It's in our schools. It's in your house. 
behaviors everywhere are exemplified, put on display, and yet we're trying to serve a God who is everything. And yet, we're supposed to be able to respond to this, and we're asking questions about how we're going to respond to it. And I guess we've got one thing to say. The reason we can respond to all of this is because God is at work. God is at work. God has put all this stuff out there for us. God is making us look at ourselves. God is making us, watch this, determine whether or not we're going to become the, warrior, the warriors that we need to be. All these issues y'all got quiet about are hot issues. And you see it as much television as y'all watch everywhere. You watch the news, wherever it is, it's there. And we got to see where God is in this. We used to put girls out. But they used to, because I was too young. I didn't know nothing about this then. But we used to put girls, they used to put the girls out. And I, I said, Lord, if I ever get in a place, I would not let them put somebody out. That was a mistake because I never knew he was going to do this with me, you know. And uh, the problem I had with it is they'll put the girl out, but the man could stay in church. See what I'm saying? She ain't got pregnant by the osmosis. But here's the help. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, I got a problem with that. We say scripture we don't believe what scriptures say. Because we wouldn't have no problem with nobody if this verse was lived. This one verse. For God, stop right there. God said this, that he gave his only begotten son, all us other sons and daughters, you know, we were grafted in because of his only begotten son. I'm about going to get happy now in a minute. I'm by myself. And it's like, it's like we want that to include just us. But the check says them that worship therein. So how in the, I mean, how you going to exclude Somebody from being therein and knowing what you've been. So he said, whosoever. That's why I'm in here. Because I'm as in here. I told you the first day that my grandmama said I was too black to be my daddy's. I ain't had nothing to do with what they were doing. I was the outcome. Whosoever. If somebody unfamiliar walks into our churches, into our spaces, we looking at them wondering where they came from. We asking somebody, do you know them? What difference does it make? They came. And somebody ought to go up and say, welcome. Yeah. Whosoever. You don't ever know who is. 
some people you think is really ain't. And them you say ain't is. You better be careful. Technology, I'm talking about technology. I'm talking about them that well dead. I'm talking about all that right there and all like that. <laughs> Boy, there's another verse that gets us in trouble. Um, that verse that says, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest. Is that what it said? Uh, oh God, I can't say it. I wrote another version to that text. The harvest is plenteous. The laborers are many, but we don't want them. You don't want them. They didn't come from where you came from. You don't want them. They don't shop where you shop. You don't want them. This country needs this, needs, America needs to apologize to all of those immigrants that they won't let in. Miami, Florida, on the other coast, is a city like New York full of immigrants. But in Florida, all the dark-skinned immigrants, what looked like me, wasn't welcome. The Haitians, the Jamaicans, they wasn't welcome. I, somebody talked to me about, I was American Baptist, the other day. they said, y'all believe in everything. I said, yep, I'm, I'm in that group. And I'm, I'm wild enough to believe that because, see, watch this right here. When you look at how many times I've been left out of something, I'm scared to leave anybody out. Because if he did this for me, I want to do it for somebody else. We got to be careful. He said, them that worship therein. And technology has done what we wouldn't do. So he done sent them to us. This governor in this state, I don't know if you know his name, I don't know his name, but in this state here, he buses folk to other places and sends them out because he don't want them here. I don't want no part of that because at some point, somebody could have bussed us a different place. Harvest. Plenteous, the laborers are many. I ain't disrespecting God, but I like my version. Because we don't want them. But what I'm happy about, as I try to close, I go back to the verse that says, For God so love the world, not your world. Not your world. I ain't talking about as the world turns. Not your world. He said he loves the world. That, that means that God loves all. I'm mighty afraid that when you get to heaven, some Folk you ain't gonna recognize. 
because in your world they wasn't a part of the whosoever. And it's going to be somebody there who going to fall out when they see me come in. But I'm glad that God said his love his love made a way for whosoever could invite his beloved only begotten son into their life he'll take anybody and everybody God still wants them. And I'm glad God is still in the business of making saints out of sinners, preachers out of gamblers. He is making deacons out of drunkards. He is making missionaries out of prostitutes. He is making Bible teachers out of these prodigals. He's making ushers out of dancers. Come on now. He's making Christian writers out of the most wretched mind people in the world. He's making choir members out of rappers. Y'all don't like rappers. He's making spiritual giants out of midgets. He's making strong men out of weaklings. He's making brave men out of the most uh, fearful men. He's making good men out of mean men. He's making good women out of mean women, making, 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 humble out of the high-minded, making the fallen who come out of the gutter and say, I love them. And you and me trying to exclude them from them who worship therein. Thank you for letting me come. Thank you for letting me have a little word. But be careful. Be careful that you limit, try to limit who God letting in.